I'm back. Wow, 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 wow. Has it been a year for you? It's been a year one way or the other, right? Yeah. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And so um, I'd like to start with us remembering on this day to release 23 and embrace 24. And so when I was thinking about embracing 24, I was wondering, what, what could I do for this? And, and then the topic of joy went across my computer and I went, perfect. I want to know more about joy. Do you want to know more about joy? Yes, yes, yes. It's a little more, a little more detail in this than I thought. So um, are you ready? OK. So cell phone, I don't know if there's a slide you're going to want to take a picture of, but there we go. Those of you who are in the balcony on Zoom, uh, you can do a print screen. And of course, uh, sit back like my little minion friend here. How many of you like minions? Yeah. And I went one too far. And then that's my personal information. If anybody needs to reach me by email, alberthasselbeck at gmail.com, my website, paulhasselbeck.com, which basically just has my events, as well as my weekly blog, which is called The Absolute Word, and then metaphysicalromp2.com is the website for the podcast I do with the Reverend Doctors Bill and Cher Holton. And the good news we received this year about that we are number 16 of all metaphysical podcasts in the world. That's good if there's only 17, right? <laughs> so here we are, the aesthetics of joy. Do you all like joy? Yes, 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 yes. So um, for further reference, this is based on a TED Talk and a transcript by Ingrid Fattel Lee, and it was entitled, Where Joy Hides and How to Find It. And as I was looking at this material, absorbing this material, sharing it with a few other friends and all of that, I realized that I'm, I'm kind of a natural at finding joy. How many of you out there are a natural at finding joy? Yeah, I think Unity people, more or less, do. So what is joy compared to happiness? Because sometimes we link them together. So happiness is feeling good over time. It's a conscious appraisal of how good our life is now, and it's based on a range of factors, and those would be how we feel about work, the quality of our relationships, and a sense of purpose. How many of you have a sense of purpose? Even, even as we move into that retirement phase of life, we still have a sense of purpose, don't we? Like, this group is a sense of purpose for a lot of us, isn't it? Yeah, okay. And so then, what is happiness compared to joy? So joy is simpler. It's feeling good in the moment. So in a sense, it's more immediate. It's more in the present. If we think of happiness as a horizontal bar, as we're moving through the happiness of our life, we'll have these vertical moments of joy. And joy is measured through physical expression. So what might those be? This is, this is the interactive point. Okay. So. How do you express joy? How do you know you're having joy? Laughter. Laughter. Yes, yes. Dancing. Dancing. One of my favorites. Dancing. Jumping up and down, right? I, I have a friend. He, he says when something happens and he does this, he calls it glee. And I went, well, isn't glee joyful? Have you met or ever met somebody that when something happens, they have a physical thing that happens? Well, he is six foot six and a redhead doing this. He's immediately 
appearing childlike. So joy is often very childlike, isn't it? And so there are these 10 aesthetics of joy. And when I read that, I'm going, does anybody do that? Like, what, what aesthetics? Well, it turns out that Lee is, has a background in marketing and um, art and things like that. And so her training uses the word aesthetics. And I still have a hard time wrapping my mind around that. But, but to think of joy as an aesthetic is really a new window into it for me. How about you? Yeah. So does anybody have an incidence of joy you'd like to share? Just think for a moment. A recent, yes. Playing with the dogs, yes. Anybody else? Playing with the cats. If you can find them and they'll allow their human to do it, <laughs> right? Yes. Having, and that, this time of year is really like that, isn't it? Having our family all together. One more, anybody else? Watch, oh, on Christmas Eve. Was this when they got some of their gifts? And just, yeah, yeah. So how many of them got the gift then played with the wrapping? Yeah, 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 I've done that. I've done that as an adult, for goodness sakes. So um, this aesthetic of abundance is that feeling that we used to have or maybe still have like a kid in a candy store where, where you go in the store and there's all this candy and you get to choose which ones you want. And we have that sense of, the, of your, our cup runneth over, even if it's just in that moment of joy. And this abundance thing is related to polka dots. Who's wearing the polka dots? I just noticed that. Yes, yes. Thank you for doing that. Uh, stripes or rainbow, rainbow color palettes. <laughs> this for me is definitely a joy sweater. So I found this. Isn't that fun? Can you see what it is? It's a cement truck. And instead of being this boring thing that we normally see, someone painted polka dots on it. Uh, north of, or wait a minute, south of, off of Shawnee Mission Drive, just west of 35, is the sluiceway where water comes down. And I'm always looking at it when I drive by it, that just to catch the water. Usually there's no water. Has anybody seen it lately? So it has these square pieces of concrete so that when the water comes down, it's broken up instead of a very powerful stream. Someone went in there and painted those squares like dice. Oh my gosh, I had a hit of joy when I just saw it. It's like, who thinks of this stuff? You know, and uh, how many of you know the author, the author, the, the artist Pansky? So Pansky's an artist that uh, I would call him a hit and run artist. Most people don't know who he is. He'll, he'll show up somewhere in the middle of the night, do some sort of art on something normal, like a stop sign, and leave. And then the next person, and the next person, the next person who gets to see it goes, what? like I did with those dice. So since it's about abundance, I also put in these sunflowers. How many of you have been out to, um, I can't, yes, that's it, Grinter Farms. At, um, at the time, if you haven't been out there at the time of when the sunflowers are blooming, it's totally worth the trip. Because some people take the heads of the sunflowers and pick seeds out, and there'll be a smile or a frown <laughs> or something. OK, so the next one is harmony. It's all about balance, symmetry, and pattern. And 
for some people, I'm one, order gives me a sense of harmony and calm and joy. And I do celebrate a well-organized closet or a well-organized drawer. I remember visiting a friend in Florida and I opened her drawers and I went, I'm jealous. <laughs> so in this condo I now have on the plaza, uh, I had one of those sling chairs from Ikea. And then I had one of those medical oopsies in the spring. And so I had a recliner deli delivered an electric recliner, and then the chair got pushed off to the side. And I wasn't aware of how much that was messing with my psyche until I gave it away. And it was out of my room. And now my room was restored to balance and order. And I had that sense of joy in the moment. The next one is energy. So this is an energetic sweater. I toyed with wearing this bright orange sweatshirt that I now have part of my wardrobe. But I thought that might have blinded you, so I said no. Okay. And people who are joyful have an innate attraction to color and brightness. So I should tell this little story first. So in the fall, a friend of mine, I call him BB, he's my bike buddy. We, we loaded the bikes on my car. We drove down to Bentonville. How, have you been, how many of you have been to Bentonville? Crazy place. It's so worth the drive. But this one night we were there, we were eating in a restaurant, and when we were done, we came out, and we saw in a distance all of this light colored bars and geometric patterns. And I said to Bibi, I said, let's go see what that is. What possibly could that be? Well, here's what it was. You see it? So it's hard to tell on this, but this is a parking garage. So they took, someone took the ordinary and made it extraordinary. And it gave me an opportunity to have this spontaneous spike of joy. So another one of aesthetics is freedom. It's the feeling of having been let loose. Do you remember when you were in elementary school and it was the last day of school and they opened the doors and you left? Do you remember? Can you bring back that bodily feeling of the joy of that freedom? I sure do. And we, a lot of people talk about finding God in nature. But also, when we're out in nature, we often feel more free. Do you? I do. And when I bought that electric bicycle, I hadn't ridden a bicycle in about 20 years because conventional bike, I was having trouble with my right knee. So I bought this electric bike. Well, I really tried BB's bike first to make sure that it didn't bother my knee. But as soon as I got on that bike and started riding, I felt free. I felt happy. I was back to my childhood. It was like, wow. And when I thought about my childhood, of course, when I had a bike and I could go almost anywhere I want, wanted, I felt free from who? My brothers and my family. I could just go and be me. Now this next one, affordances, has anybody heard of that word before? So this is one of the most fun things for me when I'm looking up and learning about something new, I find new words, like the use of aesthetics in this context. Well, an affordance is, is, is when, you, when someone or it's an object that can be used for multiple purposes. So, how many of you remember the, the movie Airplane from 1980? It's an unforgettable movie, isn't it? So there's a scene that's, that's in a room. I imagine it's a, one of those towers. And one man is giving a piece of paper and the guy who gives it to him says, 
this is the weather report. And then he turns to the guy sitting down and says, what do you make of this? And he says, it can be a hat, it can be a brooch, and it can be a pterodactyl. So that's an affordance. It's a piece of paper, but it can be many things according to your imagination. So what are, what are some of the things that you have repurposed that way? Does anybody have anything like that? That, that it was for one thing and now you're using it for something else? I have uh, a sailboat and often uh, the, one of the lines that pulls up the sail, uh, one end of it goes all the way up to the top of the mast and it's a rotation. <laughs> so I took uh, a, a broom handle, which I unscrewed from the broom, uh, that wasn't enough. I took a hanger, unwrapped it, wrapped it around the broom, uh, realized that I still could not get it, so I had to go get a ladder. But the ladder couldn't just go on the boat because whatever. And um, <laughs> finally, I got to up to and grabbed that line, and it was massively difficult to get the hanger to hold it. Yeah, yeah. But I did it. Wow, so there's a really good example. Actually, that's two affordances, isn't it? For Because you, you used a broomstick in a different way and a hanger in a different way. So, so I'm going to see if I can, as, as the year goes by, use the word affordance and see how many people go, what? I mean, people do that when I'm talking anyway, when I'm talking about metaphysics. So I'm kind of used to it. So... The next one is surprise, and it has to do with contrast and whimsy, catches our intention. Sometimes it's in, incongruous. So it's like, it's like you see somebody really well-dressed, a man really well-dressed, and then he crosses his legs and he see, you see he has these bright colored socks on that are totally incongruous. So here's something, again, from my bike ride in Bentonville. So you're seeing this, right? It's hard to see. This is a building that they were building, and, of course. And, and, and BB and I saw it from a distance, and we noticed these ramps. And then we rode to the back of the building, or it might be the front, and that's where the ramp started, and it goes up and around the building, they're 10 feet wide. And what do you think they're for? To ride your bicycle to the top of the building. And the builders wanted the ramp to go up the side of the building. So if someone worked on the top floor, they didn't have to park their bike on the ground floor, they rode it up. So big surprise. But then there was another surprise. Can you see those? So they're insects with these jewels, and these are inlaid on these ramps. When I saw the first one, I had to just stop and look at it. It was such a surprise. So anything surprising to you in the last couple of weeks? At So actually, as we rode around Bentonville, we came on a lot of things like this that were surprising, even incongruous, like those lights on the side of the parking garage. So then there's transcendence. Those are things that draw our eyes upward in space. So hot air balloons tree houses, even hummingbirds, and this is my favorite. So that's looking up into redwood trees in Mere Woods. And actually, this, this part of Mere Woods is called the cathedral because you feel like you're in a cathedral. So, so even cathedrals, real cathedrals that where our eyes are naturally drawn upward gives us a sense of transcendence. That brings us to magic. 
things we can't quite grasp, mysterious movements, lights that shimmer and shift and can create wonder and curiosity. So this is the one I thought of. Probably can't see that very well. That's a single lightning bug on a stem. And yes. Aurora Borealis combines the magic with the last word is growing on. Oh yes, yes. I, I always wonder when I see those those pictures. So oh, I skipped and I want to go back. So I want you to see this slide. These are lightning bugs in a forest. And it reminds me of a time I was at a friend's house in Vermont, and it was early spring, and we looked in the backyard, and the whole hillside was filled with lightning bugs. Not flying yet, they had just emerged, and it looked like a galaxy. And here's an important one, especially this time of the year, renewal. Renewal is about growth, it's about potential, it's about change, it's about movement and progress. It is sometimes represented by the opening of a flower or spirals we find in nature. So here's a spiral in nature. And back to the sunflower. So the color bright yellow and the color orange are often associated with joy. Yeah. And then here's a really cool slide. So there's a, all the seeds and that head are all there in a kind, kind of spiraling to the center. sunflowers. Gail and I used to grow huge sunflowers that were like maybe two or three times as tall as us and they got these huge heads. They do that, yeah. Bird feeders and the birds would be upside down eating them, which was different than that. You usually see the orientation of birds, but they would be up. Yeah, it's fun. It's surprising. And, and they're hanging on right to the sunflower. Just picking out those seeds. Yes, yes, yes. So the next one is celebration. Explains how joy spreads between people. Joy is a highly contagious emotion. And often, joy spreads because we're seeing fireworks or there's glitter and you don't have to clean it up. Yes? And one more, too. Confetti. Yes. Those are all our physical expressions of joy. And then Christmas lights. How many of you go around? I, I, I do that at least one night. Go around. There's a lot here. There's a lot here. Yeah. yeah. And, and so each one is a surprise to the next one and the next one, right? Yeah. And so you got that, you got that surprise factor. You got the color factor. You got the brightness factor. So really, all a few of these aesthetics are involved. And it, with the Christmas, it's like a, it's a celebration of newness and renewal. Yes. It overlaps with some of the other joys. Which you, like all of the religions and everything. Yes, yes. And usually this time of year, we're thinking about renewal. We're thinking about what we're going to let go of. We're thinking about what we're going to embrace in 24. I always like to think at the beginning of the year, what one thing, what one new thing am I going to learn in the year ahead? It can be something physic, physical, or in this case, I might have got an early start with doing this research on joy, and I'm going to keep researching it so that it, it's really part of my body and my consciousness so that it's easy to do this spiritual practice. First of all, how many of you seen this Amazon commercial? Okay. So do you remember what the, the tagline at the end is? Joy 
is shared. And isn't that true? Yeah. And so that brings us to a spiritual practice we can create out of this. And the author calls it joy spotting. So how will your life change in the next week, the next month, the next year, if you make an intention to be a joy spotter, that you can see joy as you move through life so that not only do you have this happiness thing going on over time, but you have these spikes of joy. And what's really interesting is Bibi and I did this trip down to Bentonville and almost everywhere we turned, I was seeing something and went, wow, not even thinking of the joy, but as I look back, not only was it a bicycle trip, but it also was a joy spotting trip. Because every once in a while, I would stop. And BB would look back and go, what are you doing? And it was something I saw, maybe a little flower, maybe lights on the wall. It just, I like the idea that maybe I'm a natural joy spotter. Are you a natural joy spotter? Yes, yes. So as the year goes forth, let us share our joy, contagious joy, with the friends and family. And so my friends, that is the aesthetics of joy. Thank you.